In this video, we'll go through an example of a genuine second order differential equation with non-constant coefficients and show how we can use Green's functions to find the general solution for this type of equation. So in this example, we have the following differential equation where you can see it has coefficients that depend on x and it's subject to the boundary conditions because now our variable is x, generally thought of as a position where y of zero is equal to zero and the derivative of y with respect to x at x is equal to one is also equal to zero. And in this particular case, x is bound between zero and one. So this is why it's called boundary conditions because it tells, it gives you a condition for the solution at the boundaries of the domain that you're considering. And we wanna solve this using Green's functions. So again, to begin, the Green's function has to satisfy uh, the following differential equation. And translating our boundary conditions, we have that g of zero x prime has to be equal to zero. That's the equivalent of this one over here. And the derivative evaluated at x is equal to one, sorry, this is one. Uh, it's also equal to zero. And that's the equivalent boundary condition given over here. Okay, so once again, we break it up into two general cases. Uh, it should be equal. When x is equal to x prime, and then we solve the homogeneous differential equation, and then when x is equal to x prime, and imposing our continuity conditions. So when x is not equal to x prime, we have that the Green's function has to satisfy this homogeneous differential equation. This can be rewritten in terms of a single derivative. Okay, and you can check from here using the, uh, the product rule that this is equivalent to this. We can integrate both sides. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the integral of the left-hand side is just whatever was inside the differential. And uh, we're left with a constant of integration on the other side. Okay. Which we'll call C for now. Bringing this over to the other side. We have that the Green's function is equal to C over one minus X squared, which we can break down into its partial fraction decomposition. That's that, so this one half, one over one plus X plus one over one minus X is equivalent to, to this over here. And again, you can check that for yourself if it's not immediately clear. We can then integrate both sides again. So by that, I mean, bring this DX over to this side.
like so. On this side, we're just left with our greens function. And then on this side, the integral of each one of these will give you a natural logarithm. And then you have another constant of integration. And each one of these was the result of integrating these two terms. So this is these two, this is the integral of this, and this is the integral of that. just rewriting it over here, this is what we had. We can combine these two logarithms because they're subtracting one another. That's the ratio, a single logarithm with the ratio of the arguments plus C1. So this is a general solution for the Green's function whenever X is not equal to X prime. I remember there's two two domains that we have to consider this for. So we'll replace our constant of integration C over two on one side by A1. And this C1 will replace it by A2. They're just constants, so we can call them whatever we want. And this is, X is bigger than zero. So remember our domain was X between zero and one. So X has to be bigger than zero, but smaller than X prime. And they both have to be smaller than one. And then on the other side of X prime, so X prime still has to be bigger than zero, but now X is bigger than X prime, but it's still bound by one. And our job now is to look for the values of these constants, A1, A2, B1, and B2. To do that, we can apply our boundary conditions. Namely, we had that G of zero X prime was equal to zero. So that's in this domain over here. And that's equivalent to saying a one natural log of one, the x was equal to zero plus a two. The natural log of one is zero. So that leaves us with a two is equal to zero. We can't say anything about a one because the natural logarithm term went away, but we can conclusively say that A2 has to be equal to zero to satisfy this boundary condition. So it means that on this domain, our Green's function is simplified to this term over here. We can apply our other boundary condition, which said that the derivative of G with respect to X evaluated at X is equal to one. So at the, at the end of our domain, this had to be uh, equal to zero. So we're over here now. So we have to take the derivative of this term And this is evaluated at x is equal to one. 
So what you get is B1 one half plus one over zero. We'll put it in quotation marks, which you can divide by zero. And this has to equal to zero. So now we have a bit of an issue because we have uh, an indeterminate value, one over zero. And we somehow have to make this equal to zero. So to stop the solution from blowing up from this term, we have to impose that B1 has to equal to zero. And that will not only satisfy the condition, but it'll allow us to ignore this, uh, this singularity, this one over zero uh, factor. Okay, so by blowing up, I mean that this will go to infinity as if you do one divided by zero. So this was what we got out from the second boundary condition. So that our Green's function, when X is bigger than X prime, is just given by a constant. So if we were to rewrite this, Okay, so this is our general solution after applying boundary conditions. And so now this was what we got from we from looking at the case when x is not equal to x prime. Now when uh, for x is equal to x prime, now we have to satisfy our continuity uh, constraints. So continuity says that when you evaluate this at x is equal to x prime, these two have to be equal. This is just a constant, so it remains B2, regardless of the value of x. Our jump discontinuity condition says that the derivative of x evaluated a little bit bigger than x prime minus the derivative evaluated at a little bit less than x prime has to be equal to our A2 term. So the term multiplying the second order uh, term in our differential equation, which was one over one minus x squared. So this is like our a two x. Taking the the derivatives, we get that. Uh, value is a little bit bigger than x prime. So over here, our Green's function is just b2. So we have to take the derivative of b2, which is a constant with respect to x. And then for values a little bit smaller than x prime, this is what our Green's function is. So we take the derivative of that.
that's equal to one over one minus x squared. Since this is a constant, this is just equal to zero. This derivative, we can evaluate it as minus a one. And this has to equal to one over one minus x squared. Remember that we can decompose this into its partial fractions. Okay, so this is partial fraction decomposition of one over one minus x squared. And then if you match terms between this over here and this over here, you find that a1 has to be equal to minus one half to get rid of this minus and to pick up the one half from over here. If a1 is equal to minus one half, then our condition over here tells us what b2 is equal to. Again, this is from our continuity condition, having found the value for A1. So now we've found the values of all of our coefficients, A1, A2, B1, and B2. So we can write out our Green's function. Okay, so for values smaller than x prime, the Green's function is given by this. And for values of x larger than x prime, this is what our Green's function tells us. And again, this is the response of a system described by that differential equation to an impulse. So the general solution of our original differential equation is the superposition of all of those responses. So we do an integral times the original non-homogeneous term. And we're integrating with respect to x prime. And that's important to differentiate. We're not integrating with respect to x. If we, if we did that, then this wouldn't depend on x anymore. We would have integrated it out. And we can rewrite this then as follows. So for x smaller than x prime, uh, our Green's function was just this, which doesn't depend on x prime. So this is actually a constant. So we could actually take that out of the integral. And then for x, x prime from x to one, And this is from this term over here. So this is our general solution
Okay, so this is our general solution to this differential equation subject to these boundary conditions over this domain. So this, this is an example of how you use the Green's function method to solve for a second order differential equation with non-constant coefficients. Uh, this is a very powerful method which finds uh, special applications in uh, finding the solution of partial differential equations, which uh, is we won't cover, but uh, it could be a further step of investigation in your studies.